Hi there guys, it's David again. Uh, it's been a little while. The weather, as you know, has been terrible lately. But a uh, three day weekend and it looks like uh, we might get a chance to do something. Um, while we're waiting though, I thought I'd just go over a couple of items that might prove useful for you when you're out fishing in your kayak or if you're looking at things you may need for that purpose. Um, firstly, of course, uh, the paddle. Now, you can spend a lot of money on a paddle if you wish to. They make them out of Kevlar, carbon fiber, fiberglass. I still use just a simple aluminum one like this. Um, sometimes I paddle as many as six, seven miles and I still have not been so exhausted that I'm willing to shell out $200 for a paddle. But if that's what you want, go for it. Um, but I'll tell you one thing I do is I use this tennis racket handle wrap where I hold my kayak so that it is a more cushioned grip because more than anything I hate these smooth paddles, especially when your hands get wet or you get fish slime on them. So this has been really handy for me. It's something I do and you can change it out if, when it gets worn out or if something happens to it. But it's been pretty durable for me. Um, when you're looking for a paddle, typically the rule of thumb is you go with one that is one foot longer than you are tall. Okay, another item that you really, I really recommend for you, uh, especially in salt water, but this would apply in fresh water too in places where you might have alligators, is a hand gap. This particular one you can purchase at Bass Pro Shop. It floats, it's very lightweight, um, because you never want to reach into the water um, when it's overcast, early morning, low light hours. I would never reach into the water. I've seen way too many bull sharks out there and I've also fished in areas with alligators that are curious about what's going on and they get a little too close to the kayak. So I would purchase at the minimum a small hand gap like this one. And of course, when I'm in my canoe, I've got a much larger hand gap here since I am further away from the water. Now another thing you're going to need the life jacket. Now they make these specifically for kayaking. Um, definitely not something you want to order off the internet. You really need to go and try one on and find one that gives you the range of motion and is comfortable when you're actually sitting in the kayak. Uh, just because it's comfortable sitting down or in a chair or standing up at the store, you really need to get into your kayak and see how it feels. Um, another thing that I do is I have this emergency whistle and I just have it strapped on here with the lanyard uh, in case you ever get in trouble, you need to get someone's attention, or you're in the water and need to get someone's attention. Something that's good to have and being right here, I'm not going to lose it. Uh, when you're purchasing that vest, make sure you look at what weight it's rated for and make sure that's sufficient for you, especially when you're talking about vests for your children. Um, I have a three, a six, and an eight-year-old, and they all have their own vests, and I routinely will check to make sure that vest is still recommended for their body weight. Okay. Got my glacier glove, woven hat, wide brim hat, keep the sun off, out of your face, off the back of your neck. Um, 
you could wear ball caps in daylight fishing, but honestly, I prefer this because it gives me better protection from the sun. Another thing is if I'm in a backwater, freshwater fishing somewhere, and I run into a web, the web tends to hit the brim and go around my head rather than plastering me on my face. That's not a place you want to be to have a big spider crawling on your face and being in a kayak. And then when you night fish, I use a high-vis orange ball cap like this one and then uh, one of these clamp-on LED lights. Hands-free, very convenient. High-vis orange gives you a little bit more um, margin of safety when you're out there in low light or no light conditions. Um, if you're keeping what you catch, you need somewhere to put it. A lot of guys will pack a big bulky cooler onto their kayak. Uh, I don't typically keep more than just enough fish for a meal that night or the next day. Because um, as I tell my wife, if I fill the freezer today, you won't let me go tomorrow. But I use one of these hot cold bags. When I'm not using it, it takes up very little space. And when the fish is sloshing around, he's not making nearly as much noise inside of this as he would be in a traditional plastic sided cooler. Another thing about that is if you're uh, in a situation where you get stranded somewhere, that is a fantastic container for drinking water if you're able to find it somewhere. <laughs> Here, of course, uh, if you're like me and you're visually impaired, clip on sunglasses, make sure they're polarized, they're scratch resistant, it's that much better because being on the water all day, your eyes are gonna let you know that you made a mistake. I've done it and when I do, typically the whole way home my eyes are burning. Definitely recommend sunglasses and a floating sunglass holding strap. Nothing worse than losing a pair of glasses. I've only done it once in the last 30 years, but once was enough. And this only cost four dollars. It's cheap insurance. For all my loose odds and ends, I also carry one of these, just a small pack of some sort. Um, this one actually is reflective. Again, visibility and why I carry that bag is because of this in this bag I have multiple Ziploc bags I have an MRE a poncho a compass uh, because hopefully you've done your homework and you know which way home is and let's say you're somebody that relies on the smartphone GPS to navigate your kayak if something happens to that, you still have that backed up traditional compass. I also keep a knife in here, um, a solar blanket in case you have to spend the night somewhere and you need to stay warm, uh, water purification tabs, um, fire starting equipment. I've got it all inside this safe, neat little pack here in case something happens. It's a good idea to carry one. Uh, there's also first aid supplies in here because when something's gonna happen, it's when you're not prepared for it. So have some sort of plan in place. Know how to deal with unforeseen things that might happen to you. Of course, the mosquito spray. I posted this um, last month, I believe. Um, make sure when you purchase this that it says that it can be applied to clothing. Um, most insect repellents will actually say it will damage synthetic man-made material like this fishing shirt I'm wearing. Typically people spend 20 to 50 dollars on a good shirt. You don't want to 
have it ruined by a can of mosquito spray. Okay. Another thing is I carry my phone um, for safety reasons and to keep my wife happy. A waterproof bag for your phone. Um, Amazon, five, six dollars. Um, it's just that extra layer of insurance. Make sure nothing happens while you're out there. And if something does, you can contact someone for assistance. Um, when I'm toting my kayak around, and my canoe for that matter, I always have a link of parachute cord with these uh, D-rings on either end so that I can move these around. They're multi-purpose. That might be to hold my kayak in place somewhere or to lash something down. It's just always handy. I'm always using these. I have one for each of my uh, watercraft. Um, very inexpensive, very handy, compact. Again, we talked about the flashlight. If you're going to be out when it's dark, or there's a possibility it would be dark. Uh, this Energizer model at Walmart has a flat bottom with a kickstand on it, so it's super convenient. Won't roll away while you're trying to do something. And again, the floating fishing pliers. Um, these are the Berkleys, and they're available at Bass Pro Shop. Cool thing about them, besides the fact that they float, is the ends, the metal ends here for gripping, are actually replaceable. You can see the screws on both sides. You can buy replacement pieces for these if they were to corrode, um, since the rest of this is uh, a plastic material. Um, if the hook is caught too far down into the fish's st uh, mouth, um, especially with a larger fish, something like this, a degorger, is really handy. They are literally less than a dollar. Um, the way it works is you can take either end of this, slide it down into the fish's mouth, onto the hook, and pop it right off of there and get the hook free. Um, because a lot of times the pliers are just too short to reach down there and it's uh, very risky especially with a, a very toothy fish and very expensive because you don't want to lose um, a fishing plug or a, a, a stretch of fluorocarbon just by this it's very inexpensive and it comes in handy sometimes And again, we had already gone over this. Again, this is just a fish gripper. Um, and it also has a built-in scale. And uh, like I said before, when you purchase these, use a, a hand weight. Put it first on a scale of some sort to verify it's correct. And then uh, attach it to this and see how accurate it really is. Um, like I said before, this one I know is off by one pound. Because uh, you don't want to be getting all excited and rushing home because you think you just caught the new state record and then find out it was because your gripper scale was off. Uh, so that's good to know. And uh, these are very handy as well. Especially with a larger fish that you don't want to necessarily boat and risk injuring the fish. Um, I can pull the fish right alongside me, pull on this, get his weight without taking him out of the water too much, and then I can just simply release him. Um, a lot of people have been talking about kayaks, what kayak they need, what they should get. Um, there's a lot out there. To me, the primary thing is sit on top or sit in. I would personally never use a sit-in kayak. Um, sit on top kayaks, you can stow more gear, it's easily accessible. Um, in my case, I can let one of my kids sit out on the front of it when we go fishing. 
if you're dealing with fish, it's easier to manage it because you can lay them down right there in front of you. And if it's something, say, like a catfish, a hardhead catfish, you wouldn't want that to somehow find its way inside your sit-in kayak and have no way of getting him out, short of getting out of the kayak. Uh, plus, in my case, I a lot of times have to get in and out of the kayak when I'm fishing uh, shallow water creeks that stem off of rivers. I have to get in and out, maybe pull my kayak or carry it across a, a, a dam or something. And, and that would just be a real nightmare in a sit inside kayak. Um, the other consideration for me, and the most important consideration is the weight of the kayak. Um, I know people that have kayaks that are impossible for them to move on their own. They have to be trailered. My kayak is 12 feet long, it's inexpensive, and it's only 43 pounds. So I'm able to throw it on my shoulder, uh, carry it to places to put in the water. Another great thing about that is it seems like it's getting harder and harder to find places to put your kayak in at. Everything is more skewed towards the guys that have the 33 foot center console that live on the water. Um, with a lightweight kayak, I can actually carry it down the boardwalk. I can park away, walk through a little trail somewhere. Um, I can get to a lot of places that save me a lot of paddling time. Because uh, more time, uh, rather less time paddling is more time spent fishing, which is hopefully more time spent catching as well. So I would definitely look at the weight of the kayak that you're considering. Uh, if there was one thing that I wish my kayak had, it would be a keel. You can purchase kayaks with a keel that comes down and the idea is it keeps you tracking in a straight line. I could see that being very handy, especially when I'm drifting along the channel in Choctahatchee Bay. So that's definitely something I would look at on my next kayak purchase. Um, as far as anchor systems, I would never use an anchor in a kayak because kayaks tend to get pulled around when you have a large fish on there. Um, in fact, I use that to my advantage a lot of times when I'm dealing with these bull reds or large blue fish. I try to turn the rod and myself in such a way that the fish is having to pull me this way in his direction so that I'm actually able to slow him down and wear him out faster um, because kayak fishing is uh, it's all about technique um, you're not going to be able to just force a fish into a kayak if, he, if he's of any size so you need to wear him down first. If you've got an anchor line out there or even a second rod out there with a line and you get spun around, now you're getting tangled up and caught up in your own anchor or your other line. And that's just a terrible way to lose a fish. It's happened to me with the second line before. Um, so that's another thing to take, take into account. Well, hopefully uh, this weekend will pan out and We'll get some fishing in. Uh, if you have any advice or tips um, or opinions, please feel free to add them on the uh, Blue Collar Fishing um, on the Emerald Coast Facebook page. And uh, let me know how, how the fishing's been for you, uh, where you're going, and what you ended up catching. All right, guys, have a great day.